Hello, thank you for tuning in. You are tuned in to Esoteric Guidance, and we are going to continue with our book uh, or journey through What's My Aura, the book written by Mystic Michella. Okay, her last name is M-I-C-H-A-E-L-A, and she's also the author of The Angel Numbers book, okay, which, um, which I also have. I used to do uh, daily angel number readings, um, and that was the book that I started out using uh, before getting tarot cards, okay? So, thank you so much, Soul Tribe Collective, for tuning in. Thank you so much for your energy, for your love sent my way. Uh, it's greatly appreciated. Once again, I thank you. I'm happy that we are at 200 subscribers. And yes, I'm amazed that there are 200 people in the world who are at least, for some reason, whether karmic or 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 divine, uh, are interested in what I am sharing and what Divine Highs White Light is having me share. Okay. So, uh, yeah. So let's go ahead and get back into embracing your aura. So today we are going to cover confronting your aura. Uh, finding your aura pet peeves we all have pet peeves okay discovering your inner child aura and redefine you okay so that's where we're, we're going to try to get through those four today right and again thank you so much for tuning in I don't know why it's so it seems at least to me in here today it seems so so dark uh, in here at least more than usual <laughs> I suppose um, yeah more than, more than usual so um, I guess the sun is on the other side of the RV that's part of the reason normally I do do these readings early in the morning so the sun is on the east side, however, it is just after 3 o'clock today, so in part that is the reason why, why the sun on the west side, or on the east side, is not as bright. change the light again happy Wednesday to you I hope it's a good day for you I hope it started out well and I hope it's continuing okay so let's get going the way you react to confrontation can tell a, tell you a lot about the best way to interact with your authentic energy. Perhaps a red aura, perhaps as a red aura, you expect confrontation with all you do and you feel somewhat confused when you aren't met with it. It's possible that an indigo aura uh, can feel paralyzed when met with confrontation and look for a way to disappear. The stressful interactions between yourself and others cause knee-jerk reactions that can eliminate, illuminate who you are and what other traumas and triggers have shaped you. Take action. Think about the last time you had a, any sort of confrontation. Focus on the emotional state at the time. How did you feel? Did you uh, experience any physical feelings? What did you feel afterward? How does it feel right now to recount this experience? Reflect upon how the feelings that came up in that came up tie into your past experiences. Did did this remind you of something? from when 
you were growing up is this a reminder of a specific incident that impacted you think about how your aura plays into your this confrontation reaction choose a trusted friend to role play the situation you have uh, recounted use new words and be intentional in your discovery as you do so notice how you are better able to deal with confrontation following the reflection you've done you go your go-to move in these uncomfortable situations as well as how you either avoid them or expect them can cue you into a lot more than how you deal with them it can reveal to you some intentional blockages between you and your authentic energy okay so I can tell you from for me my greatest frustrations always comes on the heels of someone not trusting my authenticity. That's what my rage, my fears, my, my, my anger, that's what that comes from, from someone not trusting my authenticity, my unconditional love, someone not trusting that. Okay? That's where my rage comes from. Okay? And that's where my lashing out comes from. That's where the anger comes from. Okay. Um, there have been times when I was upset with tax clients, as when I was a tax accountant or whatever bookkeeper, all of it. I've in several different roles. Okay. But ultimately, that's where I, I was as a tax accountant with my own tax practice. So, with a client, I've been upset with clients. But the only time that I ever lashed out at a client was after discovering that my unconditional love had been shitted on. For any years prior to that moment, it was just, oh, that's okay, it's okay, easily forgiven, it's alright, it's no problem, okay? I can even find a breaking point in my journey over the last five years when I stopped being so easily forgiving. I can literally pinpoint the time when I stopped giving unconditional love and then my love became conditional. And it was based on how that individual treated the sample of unconditional love that I gave them. It doesn't matter what the relationship is. Again, client to accountant, friend to friend, brother to brother, sister to brother, father to daughter, lover to lover. It, 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 doesn't, it didn't matter. Parent to son, it didn't matter. Everybody got judged according to the amount of love that I had given them from the point in time at which I had known them up until the time that I had cut them off. And I've cut everyone off from my past. When I say everyone, I mean everyone. Parents, siblings, I have 18, or there are 18 of us. I've cut every last one of them off. Okay, uncles, aunts, cousins, every last one of them close friends that I've known for 30 plus years I've cut every last one of them off because at some point they proved themselves unworthy of my unconditional love and again I share this because this I can I can pinpoint how for 46 years and nine months I gave unconditional love if I may use the word, if I may use the word, retardedly, ignorantly, 
Retardedly was the first word. So I gave unconditional love retardedly. I was unaware. Two individuals who were not worthy. From parents to siblings to friends that I consider good friends, best friends, lifelong friends, whatever. Okay? Again, to lovers going above and beyond the call of duty, bending over backwards for these individuals, working like a slave and overgiving. When I realized that that was not appreciated, that caused me, up until that point, I was a very calm, easygoing guy, loved carelessly, it didn't matter, there were no no boundaries, I was going to say no borders, no borders or boundaries, there was neither one of those, confirmation with that boom going by, okay, there was none, so, I had to get back to, and I know this is a long section that I'm covering, but I had to get back to a place where I could offer my unconditional love, but that unconditional love comes with boundaries today. And no one, no one is allowed in without being qualified. So that shrinks your circle down a real tight. Mine was already tight. That shrinks the circle down a real tight. Because you have to be qualified to be joined to this ascended master. You have to be qualified to be joined to this earth angel. You have to be qualified to be joined to this healer. You have to be qualified. And I hope that that is what you are saying today Soul Tribe Collective when you look in the mirror anyone who comes to me they have to first be qualified I just no longer accept anybody into my energy you have to be qualified you know you have to be this tall to ride this ride okay you have to be this tall this qualified these you have to have these grades you have to have these marks you have to understand these spiritual principles You have to obey these spiritual principles and laws if you want to be connected to this esoteric being. If you do not, and you are not, you cannot be. Period, point blank. Okay? Um, Okay. So we get to find aura peeves. This ought to be interesting. Aura pet peeves. We all have that one thing or multiple things, I have a few, that can really fire us up and create a sensation of pure anger. For yellow aura, it could be a larger thing such as uh, inconsiderate behavior, that's one of mine, or it might be a smaller nuance such as a negative uh, comment from someone that the orange aura finds pessimistic. The the things you focus on with emotional intensity, such as pet peeves, can demonstrate a subtle, more energetic component worth paying attention to. Excuse me. Your pet peeves can be little triggers, and experiencing them can feel like the world is pushing your buttons. Uh, But this activity, uh, this activates or and this activates a deep inner wound left unresolved a red aura seeing some someone not using their turn signal that's me that's me i'm much better about it today today i just look at them and say that's a lawless dumbass who's not using their turn signal if you use your don't use your turn signals you're a lawless dumbass and you probably break other laws a red aura seeing someone not using their turn signal may feel deep rage at people who don't follow basic safety rules again that's me okay i use my turn signal in the desert when there's only one stop sign and i'm in a dune buggy i am that anal i guess 
when it comes to following rules and laws. It could trigger a deep-seated wound from a time when they didn't feel safe or cared for. Little things often spark deep self-revelation. Again, I just have a passion for justice and following the rules. Okay? The laws. Okay? Not, not religious laws. Okay? I'm following spiritual laws. But on earth, there are legal laws. And one of them says when you make a lane change, you need to use your fucking turn signal. Okay? That's one of them. That's a way of communicating. If you don't want my, my middle finger sign language, use your turn signal. Again, I don't do that anymore. I used to. Okay? But use your turn signal. Why? Because it's proper order. Again, you're communicating to with other beings around you, other beings around you, you are communicating with them what your plans are when you use your turn signal. I'm gonna write a book one day and the title's going to be Turn Signals Optional. And it's going to go into how we as a people do not take advantage of the basic things that are available to us spiritually but it's going to be called turn signals optional because there are things that have been given all things have been made available to us since the consummation of Yeshua all things have been made available to us ethereally esoterically okay but man still as a as a whole rejects those things does not accept those things does not take advantage of those things okay Again, using I'll use this platform as an example. And again, I'm thankful for the 201 subscribers I have today. It's 322 and 99 degrees. Okay? So, using myself as an example, a tarot reader, whether they are reading right or karmic, because there are karmic tarot readers, okay? A tarot reader is... is going to blow up far faster than I do on YouTube. Why is that? <clears throat> Why is that? In part because they're more entertaining. Okay, so a lot of times I don't show my face. I don't I didn't show my face for any of the videos that I've posted today on 814. I didn't feel it was necessary. Okay, <clears throat> so there are those the masses are still more interested in the entertainment than they are in the truth confirmation with that jet take action reflect on one of your pet peeves consider all the emotions that come with thinking about it ask yourself why you think this triggers you more than other people. So this triggers me. Why does the turn signal thing bother me? Because, and do I do over the speed limit? Sure, I drive over the speed limit. Five, no more than 10 miles an hour over the speed limit. Unless for some chaotic reason there's a need to. I generally do not go five miles, 10 miles over the speed limit. Yes, that is going over the speed limit, okay? which is one of the reasons why I no longer get upset with those who do not use their turn signals. Okay? So, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, so I realized why does that bother me when people don't use their turn signals, when people don't say thank you, when you hold the door open for them? That happened today, okay? When I was at the store today, yesterday, today, something, I don't know, one of those, some 
this week it happened. When someone doesn't say excuse me, when you're in the way or they want to walk by and the space is too close, like why, why is that? Th this is what I've discovered about myself. Soul Tribe Collective, this is what I've discovered. Because I am one who is so rigid about following the rules, confirmation with the phone call, because I am, because I am so rigid about following the rules, it bothers me. And it, it's not even a matter of how I follow the rules. I'm talking about energetically why I am such the soldier, why I am so militant. It bothers me that most are not. Okay, 2055 on the clock. It bothers me that many are not. And I've had this conversation with Highest Divine White Light many times over the last couple of years. Okay? And I've literally said, I hate following the fucking rules. I hate that I have to be the one that's the good one all the time that's the light all the time I hate that at times I do why do I gotta be the one to forgive them why can't you choke their ass out I, I have to be the one to forgive first okay so that's part of my frustration in a lifelong lifetime upon lifetime of being here of 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 generally speaking and again I have made karmic choices I'm, I, I'm no I'm no I'm a high priestess because I am a divine feminine energy again that has nothing to do with the dick or a vagina men and women okay nothing whatsoever do your homework okay because I am a divine high priestess okay because I am an emperor empress because I am that then I have to be in that energy in order to function in my highest, purest, truest white light. I have to be that way. But it bothers me at times because others, even if for a season, they get away with shit. My conscience will not allow me to get away with things. It will not allow it. I have to confess. I have to. Congratulations, Divine Feminine. You've got a pure one. I have to confess. Okay? I can't keep secrets and shit. That's just not the way I function. My spirit will, again, it's contamination. My spirit will not allow me to do that. Um... Ask yourself why it triggers. Okay. Understanding your pet peeves, peeves reveal about you emotionally and energetically may be the catalyst you need to up the authentic aura in your life. Okay. So let's move on to discover your inner child aura. The you who exists now as a mix of your authentic self and the ways you have been the ways you have been to the ways you have had I'm sorry I don't know why I was saying been the ways you have had to mold yourself to fit your surroundings parents caregivers society generational trauma I've mentioned all of these several times all leave an imprint on your energy signature Children are born new and free of this molding. Again, every soul birth into the flesh, into the 3D, is a high vibrational spirit being. For a time, they resist the intrusive outside energies that tear at their inherent authenticity. Perhaps you loved to study bugs and play alone as a green aura child would. Or maybe you were a... Uh, precocious performer 
creating theatrical plays for others to watch as a purple or a child may have done. Thinking of yourself through the lens of your inner child mindset can reveal to you some things left behind that may be worth picking up again. Reflect on, your child, on, on yourself as a child. You may wish to look at a picture of your younger self as you do. If memory is not serving you, ask trusted family members, if you have any, some questions about what you were like as a child. Mindfully reminisce about your favorite games, toys, friends, and dreams. What did you enjoy doing as a child and why? Can you remember the feelings you associated with these experiences? Consider how these things, how the things you enjoyed as a child showcase your authentic self. In what ways does it call back your aura colors? Hang up or hang up a picture of yourself as a child in a place you'll see it regularly. When you look at this picture, reflect on who you are within. Being changed by this world is part of everyone's journey. And that's getting back to your authentic self, by the way. That's not being changed to darker and darker energy. That's the way of the world. And seeing how it happened is part of healing and growing your uh, growing excuse me what does that say growing as you deserve okay so I'm going to I'm going to again show, share a picture and again this picture is This picture shows in me and all my all my glory I guess you could say all my bright aura okay my energy okay okay so there's me okay I was probably mm -hmm, four That is me. So I recall, it's 28 minutes exactly on the timer, okay? I was 28 when I exited the military. Again, that breaks down to a one. <clears throat> We're seeing that a lot today. We saw it with the seven dispensations, the seven fours, or the four sevens, seven dispensations, seven seals, seven spirits of divine source, and... Um, Seven dispensations, seven. Let me go back and read because I'm trying to go from memory and it's all spiritual, it's not in memory. And the seven chronic, uh, seven churches, sorry, not chronicles, seven churches of Asia. Okay? Seven dispensations, seven chronicles of Asia. Chronicles, listen to me. Seven churches of Asia, there might be something about chronicles. Okay? Seven spirits of divine highest white light and the seven seals. Okay, again, that's 28, seven, four. Okay, so I remember one of the stories, you hear me say it fairly regularly, a couple of childhood memories that point to my aura. So I remember, I was four years, well, I wasn't four, I was probably a little older than that. But I remember Judy telling me a story about when I, we were on the bus. We used city transportation a lot with her uh, because of her poverty in mindset and in natural. So it obviously it translates. Even though she lived at the church, she lived in poverty. She would loan out money to people who would ask her and she wouldn't have enough money to put dinner on our plate. 
true story. Don't do that. Okay? Never take from your table out of guilt or obligation just because you are a Christian, quote unquote. Okay? That's a falsity. And nowhere in the canonical text will you hear highest divine white light say, give me all that you have. Never. Never. He says to give as you are able. So someone who makes a million dollars a year can give more generously. Hopefully they're budgeting their money well. They can give more generously than someone who's making $20,000 a year. $20,000 a year, you might not have anything to give out with today's current living standards and, and cost of living. Okay? But I remember her telling me on that bus, she said, you know, that be quiet, you know, because I was singing Christmas songs in July. Okay? And she said, I wouldn't stop. And I wonder, I've also had recollections of another lifetime. Yeah, recollections of another lifetime, which I won't get into, because again, some things about me, I want to be as transparent as possible because that's my job, that's why I'm here, is to show us how to do it. And again, that's not bragging. That's not bragging, okay? I am here for those who are ready to go, okay? So, if you're not ready to jump out of the airplane, airborne, if you're not ready to jump out of the airplane, get out of the way. So, at some point, around seven, around eight or nine or so, my, my childlike nature had learned not to function in that way. And again, I wonder the things that I said, the things that I saw, I wonder the things that I created, was I talking to... Where I, was I talking to spirits, Judy, Kevin? Was I talking to spirits? Hmm? What was my creativity like when I was a when I was three, four, five? What what was my creativity mind like? Hmm? What things did I like working with? There was 33 minutes exactly on the timer. What what did I like working with as a kid? Always been interested in music. Okay. My most favorite, if we could say that like a kid, my most favorite Christmas gift ever, Christmas gift ever, was a little small Casio keyboard. Until this day, I am passionate of 3333 3, when I looked over at the video time. Till this day, music is a way that I communicate with my esoteric soul tribe today. Okay? How do I communicate with Maurice White? He's the he's the leader of Earth, Wind and Fire, or was. Through their songs. That's how. So Yeah. Um, what are we done? What's uh, pet peeve? I think that's it. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Let's let's stop there. Um. Uh, Let's do one more section, okay? Um, redefine you. Okay? 
the thoughts you have about yourself may not be exactly true. Perhaps as a yellow aura, you were told how to or how capable you were as a child, leaving your adult self confused as to how to ask for and receive assistance. Or maybe throughout your whole life, as a pink aura, you were told what foolish scatterbrain, you, what a foolish scatterbrain you were, and now you feel incapable of meeting others' expectations. Investigating all of the definitions of yourself that you have inter internalized over the years can definitely, it doesn't say definitely good, can absolutely be a vulnerable and sensitive endeavor. It may feel tough at first as you tend to bury things that you believe deep into places where, deep in places, where they feel like actual truths. Nevertheless, as you do this, you can change the way you are perceived not only by yourself, but by the world around you. So taking action, thinking about your aura colors, identify some ways in which you feel aligned with them that may not always be positive. Ponder the ways you find this definition of you to be true. In what ways is it not true? Consider how this agreement of who you are has been perpetuated by others and now yourself over the course of your life. Brainstorm ways you can make changes as to break the false narrative you have about yourself. Think about what kind of of language you can use to describe yourself and how you can incorporate new activities, styles, and experiences you may have previously dismissed based on what you were told. Bringing agreements you've made about yourself, or excuse me, uh, breaking agreements you've made uh, about yourself is equivalent to breaking the chains that are holding you back from living your truest version of your life. That's why we're here. Through the lens of the aura, this work can become a bit more streamlined. So as I was reading, I was reminded of something that my daughter's mother said, Alexis's mother said, whose name is Melinda. Again, I share names with you so that they may be just for synchronicity's sake, in case those names resonate with you for some reason. Much the way tarot readers say names and things, okay? Or much for the same reason. For much the same reason. So, we were talking one day, even many years ago, we were talking one day, and we are talking about a tree or how we picture ourselves or something like that. And this is how I described myself back then. I described myself to her verbally, I said this, as a healthy tree with only branches. So there was no prosperity. So a healthy tree with no leaves and no fruit is how I saw myself back then. And that's how I saw myself for a long time. Okay? And she was like, yeah, okay. I can say this about her. I can say this about her. In her, at least in her verbiage. Now, energetically, I don't know. At least in her verbiage, she always showed support for me. Again, whether or not that was genuine, I don't know, okay? And it's been some time since I've spoken to her. So I don't know. Okay? Again, my daughters are in their 20s, so I don't need to talk to their mother. Okay? Um, yeah, and again, especially... Both of them have broken the, the, the line of trust. Okay?
and both dealing with loyalty. So maybe that's you, 1404 on the clock, or 40, excuse me, 4004. Again, transpose numbers, 4004. So how do you view yourself today, Soul Tribe Collective? What do your childhood, the way you saw yourself as a child, what you remember about your childlike energy, and how can you get back to that? Because that's a good thing. Because again, excuse me, born here, birthed here, a high vibrational, pure divine light, it's there, you just have to dig it up. Okay? So once again, thank you so much for being a part of the channel. Thank you so much, Soul Tribe Collective. I send great love to you, peace and comfort. And as always, my name is Nehru. This is Esoteric Guidance. Be encouraged.